Should the 2024 election take place tomorrow, President Joe Biden would likely be defeated by former President Donald Trump, according to both swing state and national polling that universally shows Trump on track to comfortably secure a minimum of 270 electoral votes. And things only get worse for Biden the closer you look. The incumbent president is currently viewed more unfavorably than Trump, for instance, and poll after poll shows few voters are giving Biden credit for an improving economy. They trust Trump more to handle several issues that Americans rate as the most important to their vote, including immigration, jobs and the economy, and foreign policy. Voters are also likelier to say that conditions were better under the previous president and that Biden has made their lives worse. That is undoubtedly a tough position for any politician to start their general election campaign. But so far, the Biden campaign strategy has been to publicly dismiss the polls rather than confront their bad numbers head on. Biden has routinely criticized current polling methods as outdated and unreliable. His team continues to make the case that once voters tune into the race, they'll remember why they voted for him over Trump in 2020, and do so again this November. To assess the validity of this argument, let's delve into the data. Can Biden realistically overcome his current polling deficit in the upcoming months, or is his situation as dire as it seems? Now, G. Elliott Morris from 538 analyzed their extensive polling dataset, dating all the way back to the 1940s. His aim was to determine if there is enough time for Biden to stage a comeback by comparing historical averages at this stage of the election cycle with the final results. The history of polling has witnessed significant errors. For instance, in the 1980 election cycle, Jimmy Carter led Ronald Reagan by 14 percentage points around this time, only to lose by 10 points on election day, a staggering 24-point discrepancy. Such a miss is not uncommon in the history of pre-election public opinion polls. In 1992, the early polls were off by 19 points, in 1972 by 12, and in 2000 by 8. Over the whole dataset, polls from mid-March have missed the final outcome of the presidential national popular vote by an average of about 8 points. It shouldn't come as a surprise that early polls have a high amount of uncertainty in predicting eventual election results. In most previous presidential election years, parties had not even selected their nominees by mid-March, making it difficult for voters to think about a choice they would make about hypothetical candidates eight months into the future. Many voters are also simply not paying attention to the election at this point. That being said, the current era of political polarization might be changing this dynamic, making early polls more predictive as voters' preferences become more predictable, heavily influenced by partisanship. This may make early polls themselves more reliable as well. At this point in the 2020 election cycle, for example, polls were off by less than one point from Biden's final vote margin over Trump. And in 2012, polls this early overestimated President Barack Obama's margin over Mitt Romney by just three and a half points. So with that in mind, two big things are working against Biden. Number one, he and Trump are already the presumptive nominees of the major parties, so poll respondents are making a decision about the likely Democratic and Republican nominees at an earlier point than in any other cycle in modern history. Number two, the fact that it is indeed a rematch of the same election that occurred four years ago means that most voters also might have firmer opinions of the two candidates already baked in as well. Now, the other critique of current polling that the Biden campaign is pushing highlights the challenges of record low response rates, which not only drive up costs, but also require pollsters to implement more statistical adjustments. The objective here is to ensure that their samples accurately reflect the demographics of the U.S. population. That's hard to do. In an early version of 538's general election polling average, Morris found about 4.3 points of extra non-sampling error in horse race polls, and that's for the vote share for either party. It's about double that for the margin between the candidates. 
This means that it would not be unusual at all to get a poll one day with Biden leading by five and another poll the next with Trump up five. With that said, that kind of instability is exactly what polling averages are designed to correct. Averages look to account for all of the different errors in individual polls to provide a more accurate picture of the electoral landscape using all of the available polling data. And currently, the averages paint the most damning picture for Biden. He is currently polling behind Trump in all of the key swing states, according to 538's initial averages. That includes a near 10-point deficit in Florida, 5 points in Arizona, 4 points in Michigan and Wisconsin, and about half a point in Pennsylvania. Meanwhile, the president leads by small margins in Minnesota, Virginia, and New Hampshire, three states that he won by more than 7% in 2020. Now, assuming these averages are spot on, if the election were held today, Trump would win the Electoral College handily, with 312 electoral votes to Biden's 226. Of course, the election will not be held today, and it's foolish to assume that the polls will nail the final results exactly. Every year, the polls are off by a few points, and usually the polls across different states and regions all miss in roughly the same direction, so it's likely that the current polls are either overestimating or underestimating Biden by a few points too. That said, some of the president's critics have pointed out that polling in recent elections has consistently underestimated Trump's support. They suggest that polls are likely to do that again this year, but polls have not traditionally overestimated the same party reliably over time. In 1976, for example, polls underestimated Carter's margin of victory over President Gerald Ford, but in 1980, they overestimated Carter by 3.2 points, an error rivaling that of the 2016 election. And after slightly underestimating Obama in 2012, polls famously overestimated Hillary Clinton in 2016. And then in 2020, Trump again exceeded expectations by an even bigger margin. So, by dismissing the current polls, Biden and his campaign are turning a blind eye, at least publicly, to the possibility that polls will underestimate support for Trump again this year, rather than rebound in his favor. As history has shown, betting on bias in the polls is not usually a safe bet, neither is counting on the polls to move in your direction. And so, in spite of their public dismissal, the internal Biden campaign probably knows this, and knows that it has eight months to change the minds of the American people. So time may not be up, but it sure is ticking. Shout out to my channel members on screen here, thank you so much for your support. If you would like to become a member, go ahead and click the join button below this video to receive exclusive perks. Make sure to subscribe to my channel down below and please leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. You can check out more content from my channel here and as always, thank you so much for watching. Tune in next time. EP out.